He kōna e pūrangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. Auckland, our very own super city. About a third of the country's population live here. That's over 1.6 million people. You might also know it as the City of Sails, and it makes sense when you see all the boats at West Haven Marina on the Waitemata Harbour. But that's only one of the many harbours around here. And as for sails, well, they've been blowing ships into those harbours for hundreds and hundreds of years. The different waka, and tamaki heading a waka, yeah, the tamaki, uh, the gathering place of waka. And so each of those waka had their own kōrero. That's Roy Mataman Hinnick. He's an entrepreneur and treaty negotiator for Ngāti Tiata Waikohua. And he's right. Each waka arriving in Aotearoa had a story. But the one we're going to tell is about the Tainui waka and its connection to the Manukau Harbour. Here's Robbie Polder, a cultural advisor from the Ngāti Whātua Ki Orākei Trust. For us, the anxiety or the manukanuka that's definitely further out in the harbour and at the, the harbour's mouth. Yeah, the Manuko is one of those many harbours around Auckland. It's famous for being, well, dangerous for ships. And sure enough, the Tainui Waka had trouble trying to navigate its way through the harbour bar. At least that's how one Manuko story goes, because, it turns out, Manuko is a place with two names, two different complementary names, that sound the same but actually mean different things. The other version is about the huge number of birds, or manu, which called the harbour home. All kinds of manu, yeah, e kokoana, manu go. So, kuna te tihunga kore, right? That's one of the, the, the versions of how manu ko uh, got its name. Na manu e kokoana. That means the birds that were seen dipping or wading into the water. So let's dip our feet into this episode of Know My Town, a podcast about Aotearoa place names called Justine Murray Aho. We're going to get to the bird story in a bit, but the main tale you'll hear in this episode is about how the Tainui Waka got to the Manukau Harbour, and not through those gnarly headlands, but across the land from the Waitemata. But to do that, we need to go back to Hawaii. So we're jumping back in time to around 1350, when the ancient traditions of voyaging from Hawaii were at their peak. And the Tainui Waka, like many other waka, was built to sail across the vast Pacific Ocean. One day after the waka was built and the karakia rituals complete, it left Hawaii. The captain of Tainui was a man named Hoturua. The journey goes on and on, maybe weeks, maybe months, we just don't know. It reached Aotearoa at Whangaparawa on the east coast near Gisborne, not the one in Auckland. It then followed the coast north, stopping at places such as Tōrere, Tauranga and up to Whitianga. The Tainui Waka eventually reached the Waitemata Harbour and rested at Takapuna. The crew spent some time exploring the area and as they were looking around, Rangatira and paddler Taikehu noticed flocks of seabirds flying from the west. So he headed over to the Manuko to check out the birds and what else he could find in the harbour. While he was exploring, Taiku who saw the waters were full of fish, including flying mullet, and the harbour opened out into the ocean to the west. It was a good spot, and Taiku who wanted to bring the others over for a nohi, bit of a nosy. But that meant bringing the waka, and moving a waka said to be around 21 metres long is no mean feat. They had to find the shortest route between the two harbours and figure out how to get the waka across. Hey Te Hurinui Jones and Bruce Biggs, authors of the book Na Iwi A Tainui, wrote When Tainui reached Tamaki headwaters, Rakatoura laid the skids for dragging the canoe. 
The people began to haul the canoe into the Manuko Harbour, but it would not move. Rakataura was one of the tohunga on the trip, a high priest. As he was trying to figure what had gone wrong, another tohunga called Ryu Tsuka claimed it was because one of the women on the crew, Marama Kikohura, or Marama of the Bare Flesh, had been misbehaving with a local man. So to fix this hara, or sin, a karakia was used, freeing up the waka to get things moving again. Tapa tapa hau, tapa tapa hau, kawea e tangaroa mātupua, kakau taka wini kakau taka wana, kitua o re hia kitua o re au, he kio re kaita hora nui, toia, toia tai nui. And the waka moved. The story goes that they hauled the waka across the isthmus through what's now Otahuhu and into the Manuko. So where does the anxiety bit come in? Well, once the crew had checked out the Manuko, Hoturoa was eager to get back out to sea. But to do that meant crossing the Manuko bar. Any boatie in Auckland, even today, will tell you that's not to be taken lightly. So you can imagine why Hotudua might have been pretty worried about getting his crew safely out of the harbour. Here's Roimata Minhinik again. I think that's understandable. If anybody, even if you had an outboard motor on and you went to cross over the Manukau Harbour bar, <laughs> you're going to be, be a bit anxious. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be a tinge anxious uh, <laughs> doing so. So this place near Manuko Heads was given the name Te Manuka Nuka or Hotsurua, the anxiety of Hotsurua. Manuka Nuka means to be anxious or worried. In this story, the waka did eventually get out over the bar and the waka made its way south to Kafia, where it stayed and the Tainui people settled. But... There's another version of the story, which says that when the waka got stuck, the Tainui crew had to back up and take their waka back to the Waitemata. In that tradition, rather than use the karakia to free the waka, Rakataura used it to block the way. He goes from liberator to, well, a blocker. That means the waka had to sail right up round Northland and back down the west coast. In that story, Rakataura and his sister were at Poketutu Island, and when they saw the waka coming down the west coast, they lit a fire and said prayers to stop the canoe coming ashore. And it worked. Hotirua sailed on by down to Kafia. So, what about the birds? All that wildlife that the rangatira and waka paddler Taikehu saw in the harbour. Well, you can still see lots today. Here's Roy Mataman Hinnick again. So there's, uh, there's thousands. Annually, I'd say there'd be about 60,000 wading birds in the Manuka that use this as a migratory um, place of settlement. Mm. Um, uh, to and fro, you know, on, on their travels. Some uh, internal flights from the South Island. And some external, I think from even from Russia. So we get the we get the kachwa, we get the uh, kuaka, and, and all kinds of manu, yeah, e kokoana, manu ko. Manu for bird, and ko meaning to swim or wade. And there's a fakatoki or proverb that reflects that. Here's Robbie Polder again of the Nazi Fasua Orake Trust. He manu ko no te tahuna. So birds wading on the water or birds that would rest on the sandbanks. So you've got two similar sounding names, both dating back to Tainui's arrival and both motuhake, or original names. And they've just been kind of mixed up. Growing up, we thought Manuko was just a short name for Te Manuko Hotiro. Um, wasn't until more recently um, we realised that that is a... Uh, a motuhake name, and so is Manuko. For us, 
the anxiety or the manuka nuka that's definitely further out in the harbour and at the, the harbour's mouth. Um, and then the, the Māngere Inlet, or specifically uh, the Māngere Onuhunga area, that particular area, that to us that is Manuko. The Manuko Harbour is about 400 square kilometres. It's the second largest natural harbour in the country. And the abundance of this place underpinned the Treaty of Waitangi Claim lodged in 1983. Roy Mata's mum, the late Dame Naniko Minhinik, was one of the leaders of that claim. The Manuko report released in 1985 advocated for the protection of the harbour to stop industry from discharging waste into the water and for the recognition of the rights of mana whenua, that being Waikato Tainui, Waiohua, Kawero and Ngāti Whātua. And Roimata remembers both the great Māori leaders involved and the spiritual guides as well. There was a lot of kaumata, you know, over 50 kaumata who gave evidence at the Monaco claim. Henare Tu Whāngai, yeah, um, he attended the Monaco claim tribunal and gave evidence. Pumi Taituha, he was called by um, the kaumata um, and go and get his counsel. And when she went to get Pumi's counsel, his counsel was, we need to go and see the Tahawaira, go and have a quarter to it, get the blessings from our Tanifa, Tanifa of the Manika, and Tanifa of the Waikato, and Tanifa of the Waitemata. Paniirira, kei te Waitemata, ko Kaifare, Manika, and a Tanifa rau o roto te awa Waikato. That was his advice. Is you this know? talking to, are you, are you, just for those who are listening, um, Rimata, are you talking about the... The spiritual kaitaki of the these spiritual kaitaki kaitaki of the guardians of these, of these waterways mm. of the Monica Harbour. And it seems that Tanifa's advice was sound. Roimata says Manuko, more than any other part of Auckland, has honoured the tribunal's ruling. Under the leadership of former Mayor Sir Barry Curtis, the old Manuko Council supported the building of 22 marae, including one named after the anxiety of Hotirua built near Auckland Airport. So there was a tunnel to have a, another marae uh, there. And the marae, the name of the marae was Te Maa Tanga o Hotorua. And so that became the name of the marae. But it was also an association and a name for the moana. Manuko is now one of the country's largest urban centres, and in a way that was predicted in a whakatauki, or proverb, from back in the day. The tiniki kafia, the manoki tamaki, the many in kafia and the multitudes in tamaki. So it was always a heavily populated area by our tupuna and still is today. So that's Manuko, the place where Hotuirua was nervous about crossing the Manuko Bar, and near the shore, the place of many wading birds. Kia ora, thanks to Roy Mataman Hinnick and Robbie Polder. If you have an interesting story to share about where you live, maybe a name in Aotearoa that you think would make a good story here on Oh My Town, you can email podcasts at rnz.co.nz. Follow and listen to Know My Town, that's N-A-U-M-A-I Town, wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks to William Saunders, the sound engineer of this episode, executive producer Tim Watkin. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe or leave a review just to help others find it. Ko Justin Maria Ho, noho ora mai.